I'm the 5-Minute Professor, and today's lesson is on the English muffin. And unlike French fries, or Spanish moss, or Belgian waffles, or turkeys for that matter, English muffins really are English. And our muffins, you know, corn muffins, blueberry muffins, in England, they're actually called American muffins. And we made them! The English muffin dates back to the 18th century. The nooks and crannies are caused from yeast leavening, and there are two different ways to make them. I found a recipe on cdkitchen.com that makes a sausage-shaped loaf and then cuts it into discs, and then you proof the portions, and then you bake them on a heated stone. Uh, Alton Brown suggests that you make a dough and then cooking inside of rings, which he makes out of tuna cans, on top of a griddle. Either way, you're going to flip them over after about six minutes. Have you heard the expression, do you know the muffin man? This nursery rhyme from the early 1800s may not be as innocent as it sounds, like most nursery rhymes aren't. Uh, Drury Lane was one of the worst slums in London in the late 1700s. It was infamous for its gin palaces and prostitution. So the question, do you know the muffin man down on Drury Lane, really means, um, so, why were you down on Drury Lane? The term Muffin Man first appeared in print in 1818 in Jane Austen's Persuasion. The Muffin Man would travel from door to door selling muffins from trays. Now, my favorite use for the English muffin is the Eggs Benedict. That dates back to the turn of the 20th century, New York City, probably, but not conclusively, at either the Waldorf Hotel or Delmonico's, English muffins with Canadian bacon, poached eggs, and hollandaise sauce. The English muffin pizza uh, is a late 20th century innovation, uh, and it, this really a couple of different ways to do this. For a crunchier pizza, you can toast the English muffins first, uh, but don't worry about cooking it all the way through. Uh, undercooking, because you know that it's going to keep cooking, but you don't under toast for crunchy toast. You have to get all that liquid out. So normally, you would undercook, but when you're toasting, don't undercook. And whether or not you toast them first or not, you fork split the muffin. Don't cut it because then the edges are flat. There are no highs and lows and nothing to really trap the other ingredients, which, of course, should be a little bit of sauce, not a lot, a little bit of sauce and some cheese and maybe some pepperonis. The biggest seller of English muffins at supermarkets is still Thomas's, founded in 1880 in New York City by an English immigrant, Samuel Bath Thomas. On Flag Day of 2010, he, uh, Thomas's, not he, because he was not still alive, um, but Thomas's sued to protect their recipe after an executive left the company with knowledge of their recipe to go to work at Hostess. Thomas sells about $500 million worth of English muffins a year, and Thomas's English muffins are slightly less English today. They are owned by Mexican bakery conglomerate Bimbo. Perceptum, quispium, damnitium. Learn something, damn it. I'm the 5-Minute Professor, and thank you very much for listening to today's lesson. If you have any comments at all, please put them in the comments section down below. And of course, like it and subscribe to the channel. But most important, if you liked it, if you commented, and if you subscribed, tell your friends. Perceptum, quispium, damnitium. Learn something, damn it.